Hi, my name is Kate Labrum, and I'm the Groundfish Project Director with the Nature Conservancy in California. And my presentation is going to describe how TNC came to work in the West Coast groundfish fishery and then talk about some of the collaborative fishing arrangements that we've been involved in, like risk pools um, that are working to maximize economic and conservation opportunities out on the water. And so Nature Conservancy isn't formally a part of the uh, Sea Grant project that the University of California, Santa Barbara, and University of Washington researchers are pre presenting in this forum. Um, but we have been asked to share some of our relevant experience and some of our findings from our engagement in the West Coast groundfish fishery. So today I'm going to start with a short bit of background on how we got engaged in the fishery um, and then I'm going to move into describing some of the results of the California risk pool as well as a new community-based model of uh, managing quota share. So the Nature Conservancy first got involved in the groundfish fishery in 2005, uh, shortly after the fishery had collapsed. Uh, and this was when managers also announced that they'd be seeking a new series of bottom trawling closures known as essential fish habitat. So TNC and some collaborators at the Environmental Defense Fund saw this as an opportunity to really engage with the fishing industry and collaborate on a proposal that would make the most sense um, for where to protect habitat. And so. The short story is that we ended up executing a buyout of fishing permits from fishermen that were looking to exit the fishery at that time in exchange for their participation in developing the proposal for where those closures should go along the uh, coast of Central California. And so the engagement was successful. Uh, NIMS ended up adopting the proposal that was supported by both industry and NGOs um, that closed 3.8 million acres of seafloor habitat. Um, for essential fish habitat that are shown here in gray, um, and TNC ended up acquiring 13 permits as part of the agreement. But uh, in our opinion, really the biggest outcome of all of this was um, the new model of collaboration between what many would consider old adversaries, fishermen and conservationists, um, where both sides were now seeing an opportunity to start working to, or continue working together to really implement these changes um, out on the water that were going to try to improve an economic and environmental performance of the fishery. And so over the last eight years or so, TNC has redeployed the assets that we acquired um, in the buyout um, to fishermen so that they could test some of these new harvest models, different harvest models, out on the water. Uh, and through this work and a lot of work that's been done elsewhere, uh, we saw organizations of fishermen um, and community leaders really start taking a bigger role in the management of the resources. Um, and that's, that's the story that I'll tell today. So uh, fast forward to 2011, this was when the ground fish fishery on the West Coast transitioned into an individual fishing quota system. Um, and TNC was allocated a large percentage of fishing quota based on the permits that we had acquired back in 2006. And so this new model posed uh, a fairly um, big challenge to a lot of fishermen along the coast because of a very small individual allocation of quota for these guys, for overfish species. So this is a picture of an overfish species, this is the yellow eye. Um, and these, these fish constrain the economics of the fishery because they're caught incidentally when fishermen are trying to target other more abundant or valuable species. And if you end up running out of quota for any species in the system, you have to tie up your boat, stop fishing, and go buy more quota on the open market, which generally can be um, not a good situation to be in because uh, the quota can be expensive um, or can even be unavailable. And so the idea of risk pools or an insurance quota pool was, um, was floated early on as a solution uh, during the design of the IFQ program. And about four years ago, we got together with uh, some of our old fishing partners and new fishing partners in California um, that were really concerned about these challenges. And we ended up creating the California Risk Pool, which is just an annual agreement or a contract, really, between three fishing associations. Uh, there's the Fort Bragg Groundfish Association, the Central California Seafood Marketing Association, and the Half Moon Bay Groundfish Marketing Association. And here, TNC acts as a strategic partner, provider of science, technology, um, and quota. And the risk pool has had now, um, over the past four years, between 10 and 12 member vessels that all use different types of gear. There's trawl, um, traps, bottom long line, Scottish seine. And 
Each year, this pool directly manages over 100,000 pounds of just overfish species quota and then indirectly manages about 10 million pounds of target species quota. Um, and so the agreement, the, the risk pool agreement, requires that the members of these associations deposit all of their overfish species quota into one collective pool. Um, TNC places their quota into that pool too, and then it requires adherence to a few um, a few particular uh, requirements. One of which is a spatial fishing plan, uh, and so. Risk pool members work uh, to create these spatial fishing plans in partnership with their associations and TNC uh, and each other. And the, the purpose here is really to target abundant stocks while avoiding catching <clears throat> too many overfished species. And so these plans uh, end up combining, first and foremost, all of the fishermen's uh, deep local knowledge of the resource and the habitats. Then we layer on past fishing history and habitat information and really just the best science um, and technology we have to delineate where these risk zones are. And when we talk about risk, we just mean risk of catching overfish species. And so here you can see high, low, um, and medium risk zones in different colors. Uh, and there's also the addition of voluntarily closed areas, areas where we know the risk is too high. Um, and so these plans are really living documents. They're amended throughout the fishing season. They're based on what's happening on the water. And the objective is to maximize the harvest of target species, get the most um, economic benefit out, and then minimize the bycatch of the overfish species and safeguard some of the sensitive habitat that we know is there. And so the risk pool agreement also requires that fishermen um, Ca capture all of their uh, catch information and then share that with each other. And so they use iPads to enter their logbook data into eCatch, which is an application um, that TNC developed. And it essentially just takes all of that logbook data, maps those catch events, and then makes it possible to share the information with other fishermen or scientists in the risk pool. Um, in this way, we can help manage the risk pool over time, improve those fishing plans and performance uh, throughout the year. And so in return for all these actions, um, setting up the spatial fishing plans, capturing and sharing their data, fishermen um, are provided with quota coverage for any of the overfish species that they would incidentally catch. And so the risk pools in its fourth year of operation this year, uh, it's resulted in private spatial fishing plans over 15 million acres in California, um, and then seen reduced bycatch and increased harvest of target species. So here's an example. This graph is showing the bycatch ratio uh, for the California risk pool in green and the rest of the ground fish fleet that doesn't fish for whiting, the non-whiting fleet, in blue. Um, and basically what we mean by bycatch ratio is just the percentage of overfish species caught to uh, out of target species caught. And so when you're comparing these numbers, it really um, just shows that a smaller number indicates that there's less overfish species caught while harvesting target species. And so in this graph, you can see that the risk pools achieved this lower bycatch ratio um, compared to the non mining fleet uh, since 2011. The risk pool also measures performance in another metric, which we call utilization rate, or otherwise known as an attainment rate. Um, and this basically just takes the percentage of pounds caught uh, divided by the pounds available. And so utilization rates are by no means a perfect metric, but they do end up providing, um, right now, what we have the best measure, best apples to apples comparison between different subsets of the fleet. Um, and so in this graph, what you're seeing is a utilization rate along the x-axis and the uh, different species in the IFQ along the y. And the risk pool shown in green bars and the rest of the non-whiting fleets shown in blue bars. And so you can see that for some of the species um, that are really important to the risk pool, uh, given their, their geographic location, they come out um, with pretty high utilization rates above uh, uh, 60 percent. And so in 2013, the risk pool collectively held about 6 million pounds of just target species, so everything besides overfish species, and they ended up catching about 50% of those holdings, while the rest of the non-whiting fleet caught 41% of the total allocation of target species. And so we've been actively keeping track of these metrics since 2011, um, have submitted a report to the Pacific Fisheries Management Council each year, and we've seen a steady incline in the utilization of target species and um, a modest incline in the utilization of overfish species, which 
uh, seems to track uh, fairly uh, the same as the rest of the fleet. So the RISPL is also building an unprecedented data set of where these overfish species uh, catch interactions are happening. And this can tell us a lot about the conditions and habitats and behaviors of the fish, um, the overfish species populations that we're all hoping to rebuild. And so uh, using eCatch, we were able to map the locations and amount of the overfish species that were caught by the risk pool members during each of these years, 2011, 2012, 2013. And it's just showing areas of high catch intensity in the hotter colors and low catch intensity in the uh, cooler colors. And this can um, indicate basically the, the risk of catching overfish species over time. And this information is used by the risk pool to adaptively manage those regional uh, spatial fishing plans and then update any rules or regulation restrictions really um, throughout the year. Um, the data that eCatch collects also, it, it's done on a set by set basis rather than a trip by trip basis. So we can get measures um, like the risk of encounter, which is just um, basically a, a percentage of all the sets where overfish species were caught. And so for example, in 2013, the risk pool um, harvested overfish species on uh, about 28% of all their sets. So uh, beyond our work with the risk pool, um, the Nature Conservancy's long-term goal in the groundfish fishery has really been to transfer quota ownership back to port communities and fishing associations and secure uh, permanent and local access to the resource and incentivize uh, long-term stewardship. And so, you know, we think that by placing the resource back into the hands of fishermen and community members, it really places a lot of the decision making and solution formation back at the same scale um, as, as what the local environmental and social and economic considerations are. Um, and those are really what should be going in, into management. So after the IFQ system was introduced on the West Coast, there were uh, concerns about consolidation of quota away from small port communities, and um, this led to a lot of conversations about forming new organizations or types of nonprofits that could hold and manage quota um, and basically ensure that that continued access would be there in that particular community. And so in June, um, TNC executed our first transfer of quota share to the newly formed Morro Bay Community Quota Fund. And this quota fund is a, a nonprofit organization that's overseen by an independent board that's made up of fishermen and local community leaders, scientists, and economists. And it plans to lease quota um, out to local fishermen and others who commit to meeting its goals of environmental, economic, and social benefits. So TNC ended up transferring about $2 million worth of quota to the fund, um, making, uh, marking a, pr a pretty major, major milestone in this project and a, a transition of the management of these assets. So this diagram um, here is just showing how the fund will operate pretty simply. Um, and it, it's essentially providing a pathway for new entrants to enter the ground fish fishery uh, and for local fishermen to continue having access to quota share. So the fund uh, planning to manage its overfish species quota through the California risk pool, which you can see on the left. Uh, and then it will also invest some amount of its profit uh, into collaborative fisheries research projects uh, intended to improve management along the coast. And so the formation of uh, quota funds uh, we're seeing as a, a positive trend now, and it's actually spreading uh, up the coast and other communities like Monterey and Fort Bragg. So um, to wrap up, we and um, fishermen and community partners and leaders are finding that some of the most um, viable fishery solutions um, are really placing as much of the management of the resource back into the hands of the local fishermen and the community. And so in our opinion, we see it that if there's a secure access to the resource, there's adequate scientific information to act on. Um, then there's this natural self-interest for the cooperatives and the community um, to really manage those resources for long-term productivity, for long-term profitability, profitability. And um, we're seeing that now through four years of the risk pool operating um, and hopefully through the development and um, ongoing operation of these community quota funds.